It's a gospel on the radio talk show. A show about dreams and visions and a church that is indeed triumphant, alive, and well. For the church, triumphant is alive and well. Hello, Tallahassee. This is the Gospel on the Radio Talk Show. I'm Pastor Jack King. I am your host. And um, it's always an exciting thing for me to be here on Sunday mornings just talking about the gospel, and we do it through talk here on the talk show. It's a show about dreams and visions and a church triumphant, alive and well. Now, here's something really, really cool. This is show number 1111. <laughs> I like that. I just did the, uh, the daily broadcast, which is the same number, 1111. We have a few rules. We don't talk sports, politics, or doctrine, but we do always speak well of one another. And uh, Miss Jamie Brown is back on the show with me. She's one of my uh, regulars who comes and always brings us great news and things. A woman's pregnancy center, and she is the executive director here in the Tallahassee Big Ben area. Jamie, welcome to the show. Thank you, Pastor Jack. It's good it's to have wonderful you. to be back. It's good to have you here. And uh, I don't know how many times you've been on the show with me, but it's been a lot. It's been a lot. And it's always, been fun. I always, and I always wonder how we're going to talk for a whole hour, and it just flies by. We always do, don't we? It does. <laughs> Actually, the truth of the matter is we generally talk for an hour before we do the show. That's true. We do. <laughs> then, uh, then we just gotta got to catch up. That's, that's all. Right. Just got to catch up. We do. But now, <laughs> the big news, of course, is the Walk for Life that's coming up here. Here in March, March the 25th. Yes. And we're going to the same location that we went to last year. We are, North, North Side Community Center. Okay. And basically, directions, you go down to Meridian, so you come to, right before you get to, let's see, what is the name of that street? Uh, it's Oak Grove. Yeah. I think. Oh, great. Okay. Or you can come in from the other direction. Yeah, which is Bannerman. Mm-hmm. You can come down Bannerman and take a left, or you can come down Meridian and then, then you, you can turn right on into the, the place. It's a big place. It's huge. I had no idea how big it was. And then they make you walk this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Shame on us. Yeah. And there's making uh, you walk at a walk. Yeah, and oh there's there's no buffalo chips for us no, to to, to dodge know. here. It just takes all the fun out of it. <laughs> and if you don't know what I'm talking about, for years it was at the antique car museum and they had buffalo out in the field. And they would remove the buffalo <laughs> And Sometimes, then, yeah, then we then we walk. <laughs> Not always. And of course, you remove the buffalo, but you don't necessarily remove the evidence. <laughs> That's <laughs> that, right. That the buffaloes were there, so you just have to make sure you didn't step into any of those nice things. But well, that, that's where the young boys would run through and make a point of <laughs> jumping into each and every pile they could. And when I was a young boy, I probably would have done the same mm-hmm. thing. So just for part of the fun. So we're going to have the walk for life. And uh, of course, you recently had your uh, banquet. That was like back in the fall. Yes, we did. And how did that go? Oh, that was amazing. That was amazing. We had um, the biggest banquet in terms of number of guests and the biggest uh, pro- in terms of proceeds and God was just present and amazing and generous as always. And wow. We had um, Vice President Pence wow. as our keynote speaker. And so that was a little bit different flavor for us yeah, you know, I tell to, you. <laughs> to, to go there. And, and uh, he did an amazing job. And wow. I think everybody was blessed by but how do you How do you book a former vice president? How do you do that? Well, um, we've had some amazing speakers in the last five or six, seven years, and each and every time, God just gives me this interesting little path or someone to call <laughs> or this person knows that person and that we can have a, you know, the, get the cell phone number of the chief of staff or the vice president and then we go from there and sometimes we book it through booking agencies. Uh-huh. Sometimes it's through, you know, people that, Know someone who knows someone. Because I was wondering if you actually use some type of an agency to do that sort of thing to be able to. Sometimes we do, yeah. Yeah, back years ago, (laughs) actually, 1993. This is, remember the Murphy Brown controversy with Dan, Dan Quayle? Do you remember all that? Yes. Okay. Oh, my gosh, yes. I was doing an event called Sunfest, which is an event that we did every year when I was the regional youth director for the Upper Churches. 
And I decided I wanted to get Dan Quayle to come and be a speaker at this event. And I'm telling you what, the hoops <laughs> were were quite intense. And um, well, it it didn't happen. But I did talk to his people. <laughs> Actually, uh, during the, that time, you wouldn't talk to him. You would go through his wife, Marilyn. Oh, okay. And because she actually worked in one location, because he was always around different places, you could just uh, get a hold of him. And they were willing to discount the price for me to fifteen thousand dollars. <laughs> and I'm talking about this is a youth event, uh-huh. so that didn't happen. But I wanted him to come because I wanted him to speak on the subject that they were dealing with, which was the whole thing about uh, you know Murphy Brown had a baby on the show. That she wasn't married. Mm-hmm. Of course, back in those days, that was actually an issue. Mm-hmm. Not so much today. So, as things go. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed that you were able to book somebody of that caliber as far as notoriety. When you get to a vice president, that's getting up there. Now, is uh, the president going to be the next one to come? No. no. Every year, year before, we had Dr. Ben Carson, and uh-huh. we've had uh, Mike Huggaby, and we've had, um, you know, just one fabulous speaker yeah. after another and every year at every year at the event at the end of it um i'm asked constantly what how are you going to top this next uh-huh. year who's, yeah. who's going to yeah. be your yeah. speaker next year and i'm like okay just give me 15 minutes to enjoy this <laughs> but um we do have our um sp- uh, keynote speaker bank booked for this coming year and wait 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 the drum roll da, da, yes, da, 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 and, and you will a, hear it first this, uh, yeah we're gonna we're gonna break the news right here on the gospel on the radio talk show yes because we haven't put this out yet okay. Only just a couple people know but we're going to have our banquet on tuesday which is unusual for us september 26th at the civic center again and our keynote speaker is going to be ready ready tim tebow there you go <laughs> yay um you and know. obviously, he's very strong on life issues and yes, he very is. passionate yes. about it. And uh, we just really look forward to him. And he's also part of our he's sure. passionate about faith mm-hmm. and about his faith. And he's never, ever backed off from of that. And I think even it affected his uh, pro football career. That's my opinion. That uh, he's, he's just been who he is. He, he stood firm. And I think he's a, a wonderful role model for Christianity. And to speak on the what you're all about, which is life. So I think it's a great choice. Well, so, thank you. Yeah. I know it's a little nervy bringing a gator into Seminole country, <laughs> but hopefully the Knowles will overlook the, well, so the orange I, and blue. I, I was telling you about him coming to the night to shine, which is last Sunday we had Scott Hunter, our pastor Scott Hunter from Genesis Church on the show. And of course he was talking about night to shine, which just took place last night. And uh, of course he had uh, Tebow showed up there three years ago in 2020. So maybe that was just like a dry run. See, I guess so. You know, he so, broke the ice. Yeah, came That's and found thing. out he can come to Tallahassee and people will treat him well and that sort of thing. And <laughs> now he's coming back. <laughs> To be That's true. with you folks. That's gonna be and and interestingly, his mother um, was one of our keynote speakers years ago. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay. So she broke the ice for you, too. Yeah, she did. Yeah. No, I think that's going to go very, very well. Uh, I would imagine having a vice president is a lot more to have to deal with in the realm of security and that type of thing. I'm, I'm sure that... that Tebow probably has some type of security with him, but see me like when you're dealing with, uh, you know, I don't know, FBI or, or whoever. I don't know who I don't know who all you had to deal with, but see me like when you're dealing with a former vice president, but it'd be more intense than it is. Uh, he no longer has Secret Service detail okay. attached to him, so unless he were to, um, unless he were to commit to run for president, then he would once again get that service. Okay. But no, we had to provide the the uh, security for him. Oh, so they had to get into the bottom line a little, it <laughs> did. A little bit. And, and yeah. then we had to have metal detectors and there were, you know, quite a few security protocols that we had to wow. we had to follow. What, was this a, another one of those learning curves for Jamie? It was. <laughs> <laughs> and 1,300 people. I'm not sure we'll do that many again. But, wow. um, yeah, it was a wonderful night. Yeah. Though. It really was. Yeah. And how does a person um, get invited to that sort of thing? I mean, the, I know you, you, you get tables. Is that the way you raise the funds? 
Well, um, we actually, we do it a little differently. We separate um, tables from raising funds. That I know that sounds a little backward for a banquet, but what we do is we get underwriters to underwrite the banquet as a whole. Okay. And then we have table hosts who will fill the tables. Okay. So, and sometimes the underwriters are also table hosts, but sometimes underwriters, they just want to show up. They don't want the responsibility of inviting people and then, okay. you know, okay. hosting them for the evening. So sometimes we have table hosts, sometimes we have underwriters slash table hosts, but basically, um, it is not an all call invitation out. It's, um, it's an invitation by the table hosts or, um, we send individual invitations to people on our, you know, that are on our um, mail list who have shown interest financially to a certain, okay, certain okay. extent. That makes sense. And then uh, so they can come as an individual through an individual invitation or they can come and be invited by a table host. Okay, okay. So, and then sometimes there's just people that call and then we put them on a waiting list. Okay. And if, if, if we're able, then we will plug them in. Um, to tables who and when you say vacancies. D- uh, at the Civic Center, this is down below the Civic Center where yes. they have the big banquet area down yes. there. Yeah, and that's a that's a nice facility. It, uh, well, my, my, well, for for Pence, it was in the X Hall. Okay, I call it the parking garage, but it's it's an X Hall. <laughs> uh, in years past, last few years, we've had it in the arena, which is where they play basketball. Okay, and so that's very fun to have all the you know the the lights and the panels and so so you actually that. have it. On the floor. On the floor. Mm -hmm. So you got all the seats and stuff up there. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't realize that. And during COVID, uh, we still um, maintained our schedule of having banquets all through COVID. And we were sort of the canary in the coal mine as as they were trying (laughs) to figure out how to make this work. And and, uh, we did. And part of that was distancing people, squeezing people out on the floor and then also in the X Hall. And then brought them up to the stadium seated and separated as well up there. Wow. So <laughs> it was a little crazy because yeah. we couldn't have people on the escalators going up and down at the same time. They all had to be spaced at certain distances and we had to feed them in a certain way. And, and you it, know, it was, it was a little bit of insanity, but the, my amazing teamwork made it work wow. and the wow. Civic Center did an amazing <laughs> job. And so we just kept on and kept it on. So now how long has the uh, woman's pregnancy center here in Tallahassee been in existence? Uh, we're on year 37. Is that right? hmm Wow. And um, I think my, my time goes back to, to Jenny Geiger. Oh, yes. Was the president when I first became acquainted with us. I don't know how many had been before her. And then the different ones that have come through and as this change has been, and most of them have been here on the show with me, so we're along the line. So that's kind of, and I've been doing this show now. Uh, I started in 2002, so I'm at 21 years now. So just, so I've missed a few years of the Women's Pregnancy Center. So probably, I don't know how many directors you had before then. but I, I couldn't even tell you. I don't know. <laughs> but the thing is, somebody somewhere had a heart and passion for this. And, of course, if you go back uh, the number of years you're talking about, you're not long after the Roe versus Wade decision had been made that somebody had a burden to want to be able to help to make a difference. And so if you look at it and you think about all the people that's been involved through all these years to bring you all to the point to where you are now, but still – Unfortunately, even with all the things that you're doing, all the other centers around the country, we're, we're the, the the task before us is monumental. It is. As far as what we're facing as a nation. Now, since you were here the last time, we had the Supreme Court decision that came down, and they have reversed Roe versus Wade to some degree. Yes. You probably know more about this than I do. So basically, they sent it back to the states. Correct. Okay. That was the Dobbs decision. Uh, t- tell us all what you know, because you, you can inform us a little better than I can. Well, basically, um, m- many law scholars felt that Roe was bad law. And uh, so it's, it was overturned in, um, I think it was Jackson versus Dobbs in, on, in June of this year. And so, as you said, basically that sends that the decision of whether what abortion would look like in the, each state back to their own states. Right. And so what that has done in anticipation of Dobbs coming down, 
the um, many of the states had trigger laws in place that would um, trigger in place when that decision came down, if it if it came down as it did. And interestingly, the states around us in Florida, most most of them had trigger laws that that went into place. Okay. So um, we are at 15 weeks in the state of Florida. That may change. Uh, we have a very pro-life governor and a pro-life um, house as well, I believe. And so that may be that that may be changing in the near future. Okay, so 15 weeks, so they can still perform abortions up to 50, 15 weeks. That, yes, uh, here in Florida. Yes. See, I did not know that. Okay. Um, so after that. It becomes illegal. Yes. Right. What is the penalty if somebody were to perform an abortion after 15 weeks in the state of Florida? Do you know? I don't know. Okay. I don't know the penalty. But again, it's it's up to every state to make those decisions. And some states have have just openly declared we're going to be an abortion state. Yes. And there are there are abortion destination states like California is one. Right. In other words, they're actually advertising, "Hey, come come here." They do. <laughs> and we'll we'll let you do that here legally. And <laughs> to me, that's just uh, that's astounding to me that the the, the, the uh, state. Would just be so open to say, "Hey, we we don't care. Just come up." And uh, the thing is, that for me as a as a Christian, and of course I'm, I'm, a, I'm a believer in the Bible, and I'm looking at God's judgment on all of this, and I'm going, "How can we as a nation continue to do these things and and just think we're just going to escape the wrath of God?" Am I am I being too religious here? No. I don't think you are at all. I mean, life is life, whether whether you make it a religious, you know, point of decision or not. It, it's 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 what it is. It is right. what it is. Um, uh, what I was going to say about the uh, Dobbs decision is that it has. Uh, it, it's been interesting the response of of our partners and and people in general, where they would say, "Oh, well, we don't need you anymore." Uh, Pregnancy centers are no longer needed. I was concerned about that. And actually, we have found the reverse to be the case. Really? So, um, particularly from the the states surrounding us that have either have banned abortion or have tightened their abortion laws, uh, these women are calling into the state of Florida and traveling into the state of Florida to get an abortion. And so, we, we field so many more calls from out-of-state girls looking for abortions than we have prior to June. Okay, now, now I'm, I'm, I'm getting confused here. They're actually coming to Florida because of the 15 weeks? Because they could get an abortion up to 15 weeks and the surrounding states won't allow that. Really? Okay, so that's not good for us then. <laughs> well, it's, no, it's yeah. it's not good for Florida, but it's, it's um, you know, it, it's, it's, the burden is now on the pregnancy centers to, to handle that and, and which is, of course, our joy and our privilege to be able to do that. But uh, we um, we do enjoy the opportunity. We welcome the opportunity to have these women call in where they won't travel a number of hours for counseling. They will travel a number of hours to get an abortion. Wow. And so it's our um, opportunity to speak with them and do some counseling over the phone and, if possible, get them connected to a pregnancy center back Near where, where so are. basically, this is this is broaden your responsibilities and your, your 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 ability to reach. So we're talking about Alabama, Georgia, uh, Mississippi, Mississippi. Okay, so those three states, it's it's illegal. Period. No, each no. one ha- each one has different different okay. situations. One's as at heartbeat. One's illegal. I mean, it's you know they're they're all different. Okay. Okay. But the but the the new up and coming latest form of abortion is the abortion pill. Uh huh. And it now, um, constitutes about 52, 54% of all abortions are now medical abortions. Right. And, and so there are, um, states that won't allow these pills to be dispensed in the state of Florida. For instance, it's illegal. Oh, it is. E- even though they've just, Determined that Walgreens and CVS can dispense these the RU forty six pills. Uh, the governor has come out and said you still can't do it in the state of Florida. So really? that's encouraging. But 
Um, even, even, even the Walmart, I mean, that's Walmart's, but the uh, Walgreens, but uh, so they can't do it either on it. Not in the state of Florida. Okay. But they can in other parts of the country. But the there are at least that we know of 72 different abortion websites that are international websites where uh, women can get get uh, the abortion pill by mail. So their nearest abortion clinic becomes their mailbox. So that just crosses all the state lines. Yes. In other words, in other words they do it by mail. It doesn't matter where you live. That's right. And, and it, is it legal or illegal? Well, it depends, depends upon where you are. If you're getting it in the state of Florida, you know. It's illegal. Clearly, no. Yeah. So are, are the people who are selling it, are they liable to the Florida laws as a result of that? that that's international. I, now you're above my head. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, could, could uh, like the state attorney of uh, Florida, take it as a case, okay, you sold these pills to somebody, to a Florida resident. Is, is there a lawsuit there? Because you're not a lawyer. Not, I have no idea. <laughs> well, and now, you are now outside of the wheelhouse. Jack. I have no idea. <laughs> well, it's, Although it's a great idea, but I don't know. Well, the thing is, it's, it's in the, you've already educated us already. I didn't know that we had a 15-week uh, rule here in Florida. I, I naively just thought that we were one of the states that just had just banned it all together. But no. we're, we're not. No. And, uh, and, and do, you, do you see that ever changing? I hope so. Okay. Uh, where is Governor DeSantis on that? Do you know? He's very, he's very strongly pro-life. Okay. And my guess, I'm, I'm, again, not a politician, but my guess would be that he's got stronger pro-life legislation coming in this okay. session. Okay. Because, I mean, this, this goes back to the, uh, the days of uh, Bob Martinez when the, the uh, Florida legislature actually passed some uh, – uh, abortion laws that were contrary to Roe versus Wade. It didn't last very long. They actually passed it. Then, of course, it was it went, in, it went into the courts, and it just it just all didn't last long at all. But uh, I remember I actually had an opportunity to speak to Governor Martinez about it just very briefly, and his response to me he says, "Well, you if you feel convicted about something, you got to do something about it." And he was the one who was leading it. Of course, he also lost the next <laughs> election as a result. Well, they say as a result of that. I don't know whether it was this or that. But but that what I'm saying is that the the whole abortion issue goes back in Florida a ways, and there's been passions about it. And uh, like I said, I'm surprised to hear that we have the 15 week rule. That's just new information to me. But uh, and then to, to hear you say that the other states are having people come here. Because we're the ones that are still, uh, well, we haven't changed it yet. So, but you know, also there's hope there. Yeah, um, we have a new program that we're involved in. It's called the Abortion Pill Reversal Program, okay. and it's part of the APR and the Abortion Pill Reversal Network or Rescue Network, I guess they're calling it now. And basically, mm-hmm. what this is doing is uh, the abortion pills are a two-step process. So the girl will take the first met pill in the abortion clinic while she's standing there. And then she's given a brown paper bag with the remaining medication to take home. Right. Like 24 hours, 48 hours later, whatever, whatever she's told to do. And so if she decides after she's taken that first pill and before she's taken the second pill that she wants to change her mind and actually carry her baby to term, she can come to us or to one of the others. Uh, pregnancy centers that provide this this program and there's a chance that we can help her save her baby okay let me show you and so basically what it is is it's um our our nurse practitioner will give her an ultrasound see if the baby's still viable and then prescribe progesterone which is has been prescribed for women who have been threatening to miscarry for decades, decades and decades. Okay. Yeah. So it's nothing it's not a new medication, it's just a new use of a medication that's already been in, in play for years. And there's been I think five thousand babies that have been saved across the country. Really? This started. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> and and the other side says this is fake science, but uh-huh. you know, there are five thousand babies that would prove otherwise. And interestingly, our first APR baby was just born a couple of months ago. Really? Yeah. Praise the Lord. So let me make sure I understood this correctly. How much time from, from the time they take it to the time that if they come to you, they can save the, possibly save the baby? Obviously, the closer 
the smaller the gap between when she's taken her first right. medication and when we get to see her and start the the progesterone, um, the better chance she has. Uh, but, well, but, but if it's it, it, if she has taken the second round of medication, then there's nothing we can okay. do more. Okay, and how long are is it that they're supposed to take the second medication? What's the time limit there? I, I think it's either 24 or 48 hours. Okay, so, so within 24 or 48 hours, there's a possibility that the woman could change her mind mm-hmm. and maybe possibly save the baby. And you said about 5,000. Around the country. That's amazing. That's amazing. And the thing, too, that is so disturbing to us who see the other side of things um, is these women are told that it's safe, it's reliable, it's painless, there, it's not a big deal, just go take this pill, it'll be like having a, you know, a bad period, and you're done. And watching the trauma, the way these women are traumatized and coming back into our centers after they've had experience this it's just heartbreaking for yeah, us yeah the, the movie i think you i don't know whether you gave it to me or, uh, anna, anna johnson abby johnson abby johnson mm-hmm. yeah that's quite uh Unplanned. revealing yeah and, and that is very accurate yeah yeah so, and many women will have their babies in the toilet and see them wow. in the toilet and they're not emotionally prepared for the cramping and the bleeding and the pain and you know, it's very traumatic. Uh, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. Um, in fact, I would recommend anybody watch the movie Unplanned because it's it's quite amazing. It really is. And uh, her and it's t- true. <laughs> it's a yeah, true story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she she was actually working in the clinic, and she'd gone through the abortion, and she was a believer. That's the thing that really came and stood out to me that she was a believer. And her husband kept telling her, "says This is not right." But she, yet she believed that it was until uh, until the process of time when God finally convicted her, fixed her heart. But it's really quite a revealing about she she did what you just talked about. She took this thing home, took the little bag home, and did the whole thing. And it was not what they said. Even so, her, her working in a clinic with knowledge, I don't know, I, am I getting this right now, the story that she actually has sent other women home with these yes. bags? She had. Until she experienced it herself. Well, that wasn't what turned her around. Even after that, she went back to Planned Parenthood as an employee. Uh But what was the turning point for her was that she was asked to assist in an ultrasound-assisted abortion. Yeah. And so she actually saw on screen the the baby being... Beat me up, Scotty. That's what the doctor said. uh, Yeah. Yeah. Wow! Yeah, and she was horrified. Yeah, what she saw. Yeah, yeah, I would, yeah. I'd, hey, watch it, and, and it, even if you don't believe the abortion is wrong, watch the movie. <laughs> and if you're, I mean, if you're convinced that it's okay, no big deal, then it won't bother you. Then why just watch the movie? And uh, you can get it anywhere. I don't even. I think somebody gave it to me. I don't think it was you. I think it was somebody else. Actually, matter of fact. They didn't give it to me. They loaned it to me. I don't have it anymore. <laughs> but, okay. But it's quite a, quite amazing. It really is. It so, is. okay. So your work now, your your load has become a little a little heavier because you're getting phone calls and stuff from the surrounding states that have the the laws are more restrictive there than they are here. So they can cross state lines and come to you, or go. To, I guess come to the the abortion clinics here, but somehow or another they're ending up with you. How's that happening? I'm not sure because it's very clear on our website and it's very clear when we counsel them that we don't provide or, or refer for abortions. Uh-huh. But still, um, you know, when when girls are in a crisis and they're scared and they're crying and they're upset and they're traumatized, they've just found out they're pregnant, I don't think they're thinking clearly uh-huh. and they'll Google you know, oh, okay. abortion, abortion information and and so we can provide them abortion information but it's it's very clear that there should be nobody walking in our door thinking they're getting an abortion wow so sometimes google gets it wrong <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes it's good when google gets it wrong <laughs> so they just so through that a lot of times they're looking for one thing they find another they find you all but yet, once you make it clear to them that you are not an abortion clinic, they're still reaching out to you. Am, am, I, am I right about that? They do. We want them to think about what they're doing. Uh-huh. We don't want them to listen to the voices around them, the noise around them saying, 
it, this is your choice. This is your choice. We want them to fully explore what their three choices are uh-huh. in an unplanned pregnancy and see what that would look like in their lives. Right. And when you're facing an unplanned pregnancy, there's no really perfect choice. I mean, all, all three of the choices have ups and downs. And of course, we think, um, of course, obviously, we think that um, giving life to your baby is, is what we would hope you would do. Uh, 80% of our women who see uh, an abortion, uh, see an abortion, I'm sorry, see, see a, um, ultrasound, their baby on an right, ultrasound right. change to carry. And, right. uh, it's, it's pretty impressive when all of a sudden what was just maybe a little bit of nausea or what you could equate to a stomach bug equates to seeing a baby jumping around in your uterus. Right, right. Now, you mentioned this thing about the ultrasound. Now, you all do ultrasounds. We do. At your, at your clinic. And uh, I've, I've told Jamie before we went on the air, I've been hearing these uh, commercials on the, the big talkers, the Sean Hannity show, the the uh, uh, Glenn Beck. Uh, I'm not even sure whether the uh, Clay and Buck show or not, are, are, are doing it or not. And they're uh, advertising that they're raising money for the different clinics to pay for the ultrasounds. Which is, and you said you have not had, they have not contacted you. But basically, what they're raising money is that they're, they're, they're stating the case. They said a woman who sees an ultrasound and sees their baby, there's a very high percentage that they will choose life rather than abortion. And you all have discovered that same thing. Right. So, years ago, yes. So, what does it cost the, a woman's pregnancy center to do one ultrasound? Well, um, that's a hard question. Yeah. And I wish I had a good answer for that. And, yeah. I, and I do not. But obviously, we have volunteer nurses and we have paid staff yeah. who do this. So there would be a cost in that. And then, of course, the machines will run from twenty to $40,000 a piece. Right, right. So you could break, you could break it up. You know, break it out into that, and yeah. I don't. I don't. Well, they're have, actually I don't have a per ultrasound. Yeah, run. this this commercial is actually give it a amount. They're saying this this is how much it costs to do one ultrasound. Like, it would depend upon how much your what your nurse's salary are, and right? You know what your overhead is, and and, and we don't know in, in this commercial whether they are considering that most people who do this are volunteer in the different clinics. I don't know whether they figured that factor in because it because seem like the the. The amount they're putting out there was fairly low, like maybe twenty dollars or something like that. And then uh, you would, if well, that you would were, be hard to hard to believe because our ultrasounds usually last about thirty minutes. Uh, okay. Well, again, I, I'm I'm not getting all the facts a little right, but the point is, is that they were they're actually trying to raise money to help to uh, get women to get ultrasounds rather than abortions. And I'm assuming that these funds that they're raising. Are going to clinics like yourself that uh, across the country, and of course the point is is that if if we could get the women to to have the ultrasounds, there's a very high percentage that they will change their mind about abortion and uh, choose life instead of uh, the abortion, which I'm all for that. So what I'm I am too. <laughs> yeah, well, here's where I'm going with all this. I feel like I'm just rambling here. Is it just say it to the radio audience? Would you consider? being involved in something like this. I know that you all are always looking for creative ways to find funding for the clinic and the things that you're doing. And uh, sometimes people can gravitate to one thing. They say, okay, if I give you $30, maybe I could save a baby. Mm-hmm. People people respond to things like that. So I'm just trying to help, Jamie. That's they, all. <laughs> I love it that you do. Uh, the national average of saving the life of one baby is $1,200. $1,200. Mm-hmm. Wow. Now, I'm sure that includes the cost of the ultrasound as well. Uh-huh. Yeah. But if you say, well, these commercials are putting this low amount. <laughs> and, and, and God bless them. Right. I mean, right. there are small centers all across the country that wouldn't have the access to uh, like we have been blessed to do is have someone just write us a check for, for right. a new ultrasound machine. Well, see, so you, this is exactly what they need. Yeah, see, the, it's, it's the multiplier. Okay. When you, when you say, well, maybe $1,200 to actually do this, but if you had, uh, say, a million people, <laughs> you know, they say, well, it would have cost you $20 you could save a life. 
And then you got a million people that responds to that. Uh, then rather than uh, uh, maybe a hundred people that say, "Well, I give the twelve hundred. Well, you take the million people giving twenty. Absolutely. <laughs> and I'm not a mathematician, but I think that that works out better that way. <laughs> so, <laughs> and the point is, is that we're trying to say, hey, these places such as yourself need to be funded mm-hmm. because. Everything that you do, if, if I'm if I'm correct with this, you're not getting any government funding at all. Our particular center does not. No. Okay, but but some do. Some do. Okay, no. and that's good. I mean, that's yeah, state yeah. funding. Different centers have state funding, and some operate okay. without. That that's uh, new information here. You just gave us new information. So there are some states that actually funds centers like yours. Yes, there is. Uh, Florida has one. It's a uh, FPCN, which um, manages the state Is it the FI? That's not, that's, not, that's not the FI Center. No, no, no. no. That's pregnancy help information. Yeah. No, um, this is the pregnancy, Florida Pregnancy Center Network, I think it's called. Okay. Uh, but they manage the, um, the the state funding for the oh, really? pregnancy centers. Huh. And so there are quite a few around the state that do take advantage of this okay uh, we we don't it's just been my philosophy and the board before me's philosophy that um we want to be free to share the gospel anytime the holy spirit leads okay and if there's government funding tied up in there it just makes it awkward it always yeah. ends up being restrictions when you get the government involved it yeah, never so, fails <laughs> and you know what god has been gracious and generous and we've not Missed a beat, right? And he owns a cattle on a thousand hills, and well, he's given us one of those cows. So, <laughs> well, as, so far we haven't needed it. As a person who's who's kind of had an upfront seat over these years, watching this ministry do what it does, it's it's just it really is amazing because not only do you all have the center, which is down there off Pensacola Street, you have. The mosaic, yes. And what are the other things? You have other places. The, the mosaic is directly next door to the mega Planned Parenthood that we have here in Tallahassee that services the northern part of the state. Uh, and then our mm-hmm. third center that we just opened in March is our Belly Boutique, which is our material assistance resource okay. center, and that's another God kiss. That's another <laughs> very cool story. Now, now, yeah, we just opened that one in March. Now, where is it at now? That's on John Knox Road, sort of near where the you know the pool is on John. Right. Road. Yeah. Yeah. We're down down the road a couple. Okay, I'm not familiar with it. Where where's that now? It used to be over there at E3. It was, and, and then E3 is growing, so yeah. they needed the space. So. So. Uh, so if you drive it on John Knox and you pass the pool, it'll be on your right hand side. If you're going toward Monroe Street, is it past that? Yes. No. If you go, if you're coming towards. No, if, if the pool's on your right, you've missed it by an apartment building and a office complex. Okay, so it's so near. You back, you back it up to. It's near Beavis, the, the funeral home. But, but after Beavis. After Beavis, okay. I'm not familiar with that. So, uh, yeah, we own our own space now. It's oh, really? really? Yes, and uh, it's um, uh, twenty six. No, it's um, John Knox Road. It's, it's apartment. It's a office complex right there okay so this is for away. for a woman who you've had the baby or they've already had the baby or no this no. is the, these are the women that have decided to carry okay. in either parent or place most of them are going to parent and most of them tend to be a little bit economically disadvantaged and might be in more need of help than others and so we'll we'll see them through their pregnancy up to delivery and then until the baby turns to seven months old. Okay. And so at delivery we we give them a a layette, which is I call it a baby shower in a bag. This is where our churches will um, provide new items of everything she's gonna need to bring a baby home. Wow. And so before that she can get maternity clothes, baby clothes, diapers, and then continue to do that through her pregnancy. Wow, that's amazing. And it gives us a wonderful opportunity to, you know, continue to walk alongside her because right. this, this is a population that is, tends to be unstable. Yeah. And so one month she's fine and the next month she could be homeless and we'd want to know, you know, uh-huh. want to be able to 
walk alongside that. Wow. But yeah, I've, I've always thought that was a pretty cool concept, the whole belly. And I, th- I like the name, too. Belly Boutique. <laughs> belly Boutique. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's kind of cute. So, But I, I remember when you were up the road there from Freedom Road, you were there at, uh, at the E3, and uh, this is just a beautiful concept to me, to be able to just minister to these women just, just right along through. They've made this wonderful decision to keep these, this baby but then the reality sits in because they do have to provide and it's a lot and, it and it's, I'm sure some of the situations that you are aware of that I'm not even aware of uh, to make that decision is a huge step to make but I think this is where the church really needs to be more involved this, I'm talking about the church overall I agree with that this is the gospel on the radio talk show I'm Pastor Jack King with Jamie Brown from a woman's pregnancy center is my guest today and I'm just happy that you have taken an hour of your time to stay with us on a Sunday morning here on 94.1 and as you know Pastor King is going to play a little Southern Gospel music just to kind of get us uh, ready for church this is a triumphant quartet I'm thankful and we are so thankful in the valley I can say I'm thankful that I am I'm thankful I'm thankful for the opportunity to spend time with you here today on the the Gospel on the Radio talk show Uh, I'm Pastor Jack King I'm also the pastor of Freedom Road Christian Ministry 720 Capital Circle Northeast in the Crescent Park Plaza and we'd love to have you come and worship with us today we start at 11.05 on Sunday mornings. We're right in between uh, Easterwood Drive and Park Avenue. So if you're heading toward Park Avenue on Capitol Circle, look for us on the right-hand side of the road. We'll have a sign out there for you on Sunday morning. And uh, frcm.us is the website. Also, you can find this show on the podcast. It's show number 1111. And... Uh, uh, it'll be there, and you can check it out and share it with a friend if you want to. Also, don't forget, that Saturday night, 7 o'clock, the Saturday Night Gospel Sing with Pastor Jack King. We play a full hour of the best music in the land. And also the daily broadcast, Monday through Friday here on 94.1, 11 o'clock. It's a daily Bible teaching. Uh, Miss Jamie, let's give everybody information how to contact a, a woman's pregnancy center, how they can donate, how they can volunteer. Give us all the lowdown on all of that. Well, uh, you can donate, volunteer, all kinds of things at our, one of our websites. It's called lifeisprecious.net. Okay. And that's a new one. I don't think I remember that. Well, that's the, the we have client-facing websites, one for Mosaic and one for the campus location. And then we have our donor-facing website, which is lifeisprecious.net. Okay. Lifeisprecious.net. Net. Okay. So you can get information on our walks. Um Donations, um, you know, volunteer applications, okay. all that kind of stuff. Volunteer to be a counselor, volunteer to do other things as well, I would imagine. Well, it's the, the, the uh, range is wide <laughs> and the need is there. Yeah. Uh, but yes, we need um, counselors, male counselors, female counselors. We need the moms and babies. Or, I'm sorry, that's not what we call it anymore. The belly boutique counselors. Okay. Uh, office work. I mean, it just and, it goes uh, on and on and on. And for the nurses, the ultrasound, right? Yes. Do, do you still use volunteers for that? Yes, okay. we do. What is a qualification? And we train them. What is the qualification to be a, a, a to do an ultrasound? Uh, nursing background, and then we train them. Okay, RN, LPN, or what? Either. Really? Okay. Mm-hmm. So, if you're a, a nurse and you would want to be involved, that's an opportunity for you to do that as well. That's that's exciting. And uh, uh, donations, you can. I guess you could donate online. Yes. Or, or could they just send a check? Absolutely. Uh, and where would they send it? Nine one nine West Pensacola Street, Tallahassee, okay. Florida. Yeah, uh, Sam, one of those old fashioned people <laughs> <laughs> that I, likes to write checks. I like to write. We like to take checks. Yeah, and the thing about it is, it, is, they're getting more and more. They're squeezing me on on this thing. You know, you go to places. Oh, we don't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you don't want my money. <laughs> In fact, I just, I just eliminated um, a company that I've been with for 
40 some years because they told me I couldn't send them a check anymore. Wow. Now that's that's being extreme in it. That's crazy. <laughs> but uh, you know, there's got to be some benefits to being old <laughs> and you can be a little cranky at times. <laughs> Don't mess with me. That's no. right. So, uh, but the thing is is that so there are people who would prefer to give that way, and we don't want to take that opportunity away from them. Absolutely, so. and actually, that's the most economical way to donate. Yeah, because these other places they take percentages out. Yes, they yeah, do. Yeah, I know about all about that nonsense. <laughs> okay, the Walk for Life, the twenty fifth of March. Yes. And what's the name of that place out there? Northside Community. Northside Community Center, and. Basically, it's like a big uh, happy time <laughs> on, a, on a Saturday morning. You go out, and they got all kinds of stuff going on out there. And then they say, it's time to walk. And everybody starts we, walking. We do. It's a two-mile walk. And it's just a family fun it is. day. There's yeah. all, We have a petting zoo. We have you know the bounce houses. We have... Of course, the bake sale. Never yes. forget the bake sales. And there's just lots of fun and activities vendors, for kids. Vendors selling food mm-hmm. and things like, things of that nature. And uh, and they uh, just need to go to joinwalkforlife.com and you can sign up to become a walker. Yeah. Obviously, the way this works is if you um, just ask your friends to support you, and they do, and you become a pledge-raising walker, that's how you know we, we generate funds. And most of the... The uh, funds are coming in through their own web pages. It's real easy to yeah, set up yeah. your own web page. Explain all that. I remember we've talked about this before. You, they can go there and you lead them how to set up their own web page. Uh, why? Okay. But, you know, with their own pictures, your own reason why you're, you're you support a women's pregnancy center, and then uh, as people give donations, they can do it directly on on your web page. And it just, you can see the little thermometer with your goal going up and this up. This is and so up. high it's tech. It's very fun. <laughs> yes, it's fun. It's wonderful. Okay, so you're, t- you're saying that somebody who is, is computer illiterate as I am could go to this place and, and build my own website. Well, I don't know about you, Jack. That might be a question. <laughs> For you, there's still paper forms. Yes. Uh, You'll yeah. get a pledge form in the mail yeah. in our newsletter. Yes. But uh, I, I have come a long way. You have since, come a long since, since way. She, she actually uh, spent some time trying to tutor me at one time. And she really did help me a lot. I, a lot of the things I learned from you, I'm benefiting from. Matter of fact, been on the radio, we're, we're, we're recording on a computer right now. I mean, that's light years. I know. <laughs> Amazing. But the thing is, there are people I actually I find people who are in worse shape than I am as far as computer ability and then sometimes I meet people who are my age and man they're just whiz at this sort of thing so there's always hope right (laughs) well I married an engineer and gave birth to two software engineers so I don't have to know any of it I just know how to turn it on and everybody else does the rest but you do have I like it but you have a background in this sort of thing right First computers and all that sort of thing. Absolutely not. No. No. So, so in I, other just, words, I just hire people who who do. Jack. So you mean that's, what, that's how that I'm works? I'm being instructed by somebody who didn't know yourself. Is that what you're trying to tell well, me? Oh, I know it now. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's, anyway, the point is, is it the walk for life? What she's telling you that you can set up your own website by their instructions. Yes. So, so where do you go to? to f- and then you you go to joinwalkforlife.com, dot com, and then okay. you set up your page, and then you just push it out through your social media, what, whichever form of social media you My like. Social media. Yes. <laughs> right. Okay. And uh, then people will respond. Yeah. See, I it's like amazing. That. And you just ask someone. Very few people will say no, and we yeah. collect the money. Right. Yeah, just give us good contact information. And that's the other thing is that they don't have to go harassing people. No, we'll You'll do it for them. Yeah. <laughs> so the, Send our need man out. But see, I like <laughs> this. I hire people to do it. Thank I like the sound of that. Yes, <laughs> yeah. well. Uh, I'm going to have to think about that a little bit more. But the point is, is that this is a good way for you to be able to let your friends know one of your passions, which is life. And saving your life, setting up a cool website with with your own little personal touches to it. Mm-hmm. Now, how long have you been doing this? The, the, talk about the website thing. 
Um, we've probably been doing this four or five years at this point. Okay. Did you see a, a uptick? Oh my gosh, yes. Okay. So this works every year. Yes, it's it's bigger and bigger. Huh. How about that? So now, when they're, when they're through with this after the end of the, when you have the walk, do they eliminate that website or they just keep it going for the next year? Uh, we'll keep the web pages open for about a month after the walk and okay. then, then we shut them down until the next year. Okay. So the next year they have to create a whole new one. They do. But now, how, you have to get a, a domain, right? Yes. Okay. We did. Okay, so do you just using one domain and it all works off that one? Yes. Okay. Joinwalkforlife.com. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I I know a little something about the domain because I have to write the check to pay for it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> sure. there's that. Yeah. So that's that's about how much I know about all I know. So my, my deacon comes to me and says, "Well, we got a we got a." He says, "I went ahead and paid for it. The church could pay me back." That, that's about what I know. <laughs> that's for it. But I know you have to have one in order to have websites. So you're talking about you have uh, like an overall one that everybody works under. Is that right? We have lots of different domains, but but the one with the Walk for Life, yes, yeah. we have its own domain, yes. Yeah, so everybody that's doing these websites are working under your one do- domain. Okay. Yes. So they don't have to go out and purchase one. No, no, no. Got oh, it. no. Got it. Goodness, no. Yeah, I'm just trying to help everybody understand here. Because <laughs> <laughs> cause if you're, from what you're telling us, this thing has been very successful. Yes. So we wanted to continue to be so. So, yes. the, so the better clarity we have, yes. the more successful it's going to be. So yes, yeah, yes. Have, and, and you know, there's there's people that are very intimidated by this. But sure, I promise you, it's very easy. Yeah, yeah, it's very easy. But see, I have a method to my madness here. Just just trying to make it sure that everybody understands it's not as that difficult as I'm making it out to be. And they can go and they can do it. They can have fun with it, and they can help raise money to be able to fund a woman's pregnancy center. That's the bottom line, isn't it? That's right. <laughs> okay. And we do. We have fun. Yeah, yeah, there you go. And at the event, it is a lot of fun. It's a very festive type of a, of an experience as such. You see people that you probably don't see the rest of the year. They do, yeah. and, and they have such fun. And it's it really is a cross-section of different churches across, really across our, our community. And they have such fun, we can't get them to go home. <laughs> You have to say, go home. Oh, really, really. I, I, I didn't stay f- f- uh, for a long, long time last time I was there. How, what, I love it that they want to be there. What time is it generally over? I mean, where everybody's finally gone. Um, Probably about 11. Really? Yeah, they stand around and talk for a while. Okay, because it starts at what time? It starts um, at 8.30. 8.30. Is that when the walk actually starts? Nine. Nine o'clock, okay. Mm-hmm. So at 8.30 is when, you, when you're when you usually register. there on the platform and you're... Well, you, we register. Everybody registers that's at 8.30 right. and comes that's right. in. And then at nine, the program starts and we share, you know, maybe a, what God's done over well, the last you, year. Maybe yeah, you're talking about the people who, uh, who have given and you, you recognize different people for things like that. And, mm-hmm. and you do all that. And then you say, okay, it's time to walk. <laughs> and then people take off. And we have a man blow a shofar. Yes, that's right. I remember that. Yeah, and then you have the the drone that goes over and takes pictures of everybody. Yes, isn't that fun? <laughs> and this last year too, um, one of our staff members' husband is a pilot, has his own plane, and he drew hearts in the sky while we were walking. Really? Yes, I missed that. You did? Well, maybe we'll get it to do it again this year. I guess I just wasn't looking up. I suppose was that announced that he was going to be doing that or? No, I announced from the stage okay. that he was up there doing it. Yeah, and she was talking. We were talking about this earlier. The last year they had her up, kind of up on the hill, which seemed to me like a little disconnect. This year they're they're bringing We're going to, yes. down in the, it was too far away. Yeah, down there with the people, where you get a little better connection with people yes. like that. And so maybe you made that announcement while you're up on the hill. I did, and, and people I just, probably couldn't hear. Well, me. there was some of that, but then again, my hearing isn't the best, so I'm not the best example on that. So to be able to. But I think any time that you get that one-on-one feeling, just having you right down there with the rest of us, mm-hmm. and you you get that sense, and, and you get big, actually, it's easier to set your heart and passion for what you do and your staff and all the the work that you all do, which is just absolutely amazing. <laughs> well, God does it. Yeah. We well, just show up. Yeah, again, it is amazing. It's yeah, amazing what he does. Amen. I mean, watching, like I said, from the time that I first became acquainted with this ministry to where you are now with the, the, the different locations, uh, different 
even the aspects of what you do because now you you work with men not that the men are pregnant but you're you're dealing with the ones who would be the potential father mm-hmm. and, and you're doing all these things that you didn't used to be able to do as god has grown and expanded this ministry over all the years i think it's just incredible and this is why you know i would encourage people to, to be involved and uh, so if they want to give where they go Lifeisprecious.net. Lifeisprecious.net. And that's the same place to go if they want to volunteer? Yes. Okay. So you can do all of that. Just go to your handy dandy computer and type in lifeisprecious.net. Net. And you can go there and I'm sure find out a lot of information about the center. Now, and I'm looking at my clock here. I want to make sure we don't, <laughs> it'll beep if, if we don't get out on time. But there are other centers surrounding Tallahassee. Yes. Are you all involved in helping to satellite some of these? Yes. Okay. Yes, we are. Um, there are three different pregnancy centers within the state. I'm sorry, within the city of Tallahassee. Okay. The Phi Center, which we spoke of earlier, and then Open Door Women's Clinic. And um, then to the hour to the east and an hour to the west of us in Madison and Mariana, there are former branches of ours that we have spun off into independence. Wonderful. So they now operate successfully on their own and doing great, thriving, thriving, doing wow. great ministry. And then there's a pregnancy center to the north of us, which is in Gadsden County. Okay. And then there's one in Wakala. So we have helped um, both of those whenever they need it. We come alongside them, do training, you wow. know, be a support, whatever we can do for them. So so the, the success of the one here in Tallahassee has led to the success of these other ministries as well. Well, we want to see um, all of these centers thrive. We, we right. spend a good bit of time mentoring other pregnancy centers around the country. As people have poured into us, we want to be able to pour into them wow. as well. Wow. So do, it's our privilege to do so. Do you ever sleep? I mean, you got so much going on here. <laughs> how, do you, how do you keep all this going? It's just fun. It it's just fun. It's amazing. Yeah. And, and when you get to see God work in the ways that he does on a daily basis, you get to watch uh, men and women come to Christ. One came to Christ, you know, several this week. Wow. And you watch, um, you know, Decisions for Life. That's amazing. I mean, how can you not just... Yeah. Sit there with your mouth open all the time. And I always tell people, I says, if you follow God, it'll always be more fun than you ever thought it could be. Absolutely. And it's just, as I say, if you got a dream, just launch that dream, put one foot in front of the other, and just let God do what God does. Mm. <laughs> but right now it's time for us to go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we're just thankful that uh, you've given us an opportunity to share these things here on these airwaves. And Lord, I just I pray for this uh, ministry, a woman's pregnancy center. And Lord, I just pray against this whole thing of abortion, that God, that the hand of God would just move across the country, Father, convict hearts, and that life would become very, very precious to each and every one. And Lord, I ask these things in the name of Jesus, because I know that's where the power is. Father, we do pray over our city. We pray for our country. Father, I pray for peace. Peace around the world, of peace in the city of Jerusalem and the nation of Israel. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Miss Jamie Brown, thank you for coming. I, I always enjoy it. having you on the show, and you always give us so much good information. Oh, well, thank you. And until next Sunday morning, may the Lord bless you.